to worship with Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit. Today, as we gather for worship, let me invite you to light a candle or to put on a special lamp in your home to signify the presence of the Holy Spirit poured out by God on all of us as we come before God to worship. John calls people to repent, to clear the decks, to completely reorder their lives so that nothing gets in the way of the Lord's coming. The reading from Isaiah gives the context for this radical call, the assurance of forgiveness that encourages us to repent, the promise that the coming one will be gentle with the little ones. Isaiah calls us to be heralds with John, to lift up our voices fearlessly and say, See, your God is coming. We say it to one another in worship in order to say it with our lives in a world in need of justice and peace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, 
but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord of God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this day is a reading from Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than me is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. William Boggs is a theologian and, and writer and he tells in his book, Sin Boldly, But Trust God More Boldly, about the time he was in South Carolina with his wife and his two children, and they were driving in the Piedmont, right, not on the coast, but inland a little bit, and he kept seeing these signs, peaches, pick your own, buy a basket for just five dollars, I think it was. Some of you have never been on the coast of South Carolina or any of the eastern coast, just imagine yourself up in the Palisades and you're driving along ready to pick and that sun is so intense, that mountain sun, that you feel like you're going to be a cinder. Well, that's what Boggs was feeling at the same time he was knowing that the humidity was about 80% as it often is along that area. And he's thinking, I've got to get out of here, I've got to get out of here. And his kids are sitting in the back seat, Daddy, we've got to stop, we've got to stop, we've got to stop. But you know what happened. They stopped. And they went to a little fruit stand, and there was this withered old man with brown skin. And his skin looked like a peach pit. He had been sitting out in that stand probably his whole life, and maybe even more. Who knows? And William fished out his money, gave his money, and grumbled as they started walking down. And they almost immediately, the kids saw peaches and started grabbing at them. And the old man yelled, no, go further. So they went a little further and the kids grabbed again and the old man yelled, no, go further. And that happened three or four times. And finally they were literally in the middle of the orchard and the peaches, Boggs observed, looked like the Garden of Eden. They were big and they were luscious and the bees buzzing around seemed to be very gentle and kind and undisturbed as the kids started filling the basket in quick order. Our gospel lesson this day is almost the same scene. God's created bounty for us beyond bounty. And John is saying to us, go further. You haven't prepared for Advent yet. Go further. Each of us, I'm sure, has our own Advent traditions, and maybe some of you don't. Maybe you're coming new to a life in the faith. Advent's called a time of coming, and it's literally a Latin word that means coming prepare. 
were preparing for the birth of the Christ child. I'd been away for a week or so, and when I got back to church this afternoon, I looked and I noticed that the crutch scene, the baby Jesus isn't there. And that's good. Oftentimes we get ahead of ourselves and we want to be done with the whole process. John the Baptist is just saying, go further. What would that look like in your life? Maybe tonight you're sitting around the dining room table. Maybe you're a couple. Maybe you're one person. What it might look like is to call someone and say, listen to worship next week with me as we prepare for Advent. It might mean inviting a neighbor to come. It might mean a gift for a child who's never got one. The ELCA has a website called ELCA Good Gifts, and it's a delightful site where you can buy a couple of baby chicks and give them to someone poor in a third world country and name it for someone you love, some child. And we've done that for a few years, and our granddaughters are delighted when they get the post-it that they've given a chick to a child or a backpack. John the Baptist is saying to each of us, go further, find some way to prepare yourself and come into the presence of God. God incarnate who comes into the world. C.S. Lewis is one of my favorite Christian authors, extraordinary writer. It's an intriguing story if you know his story. He was an Oxford Don and he was not a believer. But he kept reading scripture, he kept studying, and he was good friends with Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings, and that's really all about light and darkness and danger and finding peace in the world. Lewis finally became a Christian, and he wrote in his wonderful little book called Mere Christianity, just the way John is calling us to go further. Lewis says, you know, you can engage with God, you can actually become a reflection of God, standing in front of a stainless mirror and be radiant beyond your imagination. But you have to do it. God's not going to force you to do it. And if you do it, you'll shine out with a light that will astound the world. And brothers and sisters, that's an opportunity we all have to shine the light, the light that's coming into the world by our very being. It's interesting to think about the way John was. You know, I'm, I'm intrigued by someone who's in camel hair and a belt eating wild honey. I don't think there was any other kind of honey back then. There weren't factories to process it. And if you've ever eaten wild honey, it's almost as sweet as creation, as you chew the wax and the honey. I used to be a beekeeper, and I just love doing that. It's a, so in touch with God's creation. John's calling us by his very body, by his very being, to go further. And it shouldn't miss us. We shouldn't miss the fact that John's gone away from the temple. Jewish worship was centered on the temple, but it had become very involved. You had to be clean. You had to have money for offering. But John the Baptist, preparing for Christ, goes out to the fringes, not in a sanctuary like this beautiful sanctuary, but maybe on a street corner. And I'm always intrigued by where Jesus would come if he came today. Would it be into our church? I hope so. But it would also be on the street corner where people are longing to meet and have an encounter with God. As I think about that first passage from Isaiah, he's talking about preparing and getting ready. And then there's that incredible verse that says, tell Jerusalem she has served her sentence. Well, brothers and sisters, we have served our sentence too. And we can be as radiant as that person that C.S. Lewis describes as we stand in the image of God and shine forth. And I'll never forget when I first became a parish pastor, I was at a funeral luncheon. We had lost an older member, and it was, if there can be a good death, a good death. We celebrated her life and celebrated the resurrection. And somebody at the luncheon leaned over to me and said, Pastor, you read that passage about freedom and, and jail. Would you go visit someone in jail? 
I thought, that's a curious question. And I thought this person had kind of a, an agenda, but I wasn't sure what it was. And, and maybe God's a God with a sense of humor or a God of irony, because it wasn't a week later that another of our parishioners, rushing to work, crossed a solid line, lost control of her car on the ice, and slammed into somebody who was at their mailbox, and that person died. Our parishioner ended up in the county jail for a year, I think it was, and I went to visit her very regularly, and I was amazed at how hard it was to bring a communion meal, a little, little teeny bit of wine into a jail as a comfort for that person. Her sentence was served, and she came home to the family and to the church, and she was welcomed. Isaiah says, our sentence is finished, and we are welcomed. Come closer. That's what John is saying to us this day. Come closer to the risen Lord and know that he might not be in the temple in the center of the city. He might be on the fringes the way John was on the fringes. Wherever we open our heart to the Lord and we say yes to the Lord is where God will find us no matter where we are and no matter how broken we are. God will find us and bring us into the kingdom. John says, come close this for this night. I say to you, come closer and be in the presence of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all its creatures. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Comfort your people with words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving and all who know depression or anxiety or who feel lonely and forgotten. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant the holy patience to all who are waiting this season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people 
awaiting new diagnoses or treatments. Protect expectant mothers. Watch for those who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Today we pray for our church, our church council, and people across the world who find themselves living in areas of conflict. We name now in our hearts those places and those people, and we name them on our lips as well. The Mideast, for us, yeah. this congregation. Merciful God, receive, receive our God. prayer. With you, a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past, and give us the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your heaven and new earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God, God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessings of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen.